right guys, good morning. It's currently Wednesday morning. It's like, Alexa, what's the time? The time is 8.22 a.m. I need to leave the house in like 20 minutes, so I'm just gonna finish cleaning up a bit and then head on my way. My major flaw is being on time and then making myself late by dilly-dallying because I feel like I have too much time. And then I have to rush. I got back from Poland yesterday night. I got home around 9.30 p.m. and then I was asleep around 12 because I had some work to do. But I was up bright and early this morning at 5.30 because I had more work to do. I had a meeting at 7. And now I'm heading into Central because I'm shooting with Art of London for the whole day. And we finish at 3.30. So that should be fun. I believe we're going on private tours of l a few different galleries around London. Some independent, some big. Like we're doing the National Gallery and some of the exhibitions in there. But um, yeah, that's the plan for today. So if you want to see the final content that I make, definitely head over to my Pinterest because it's all going to be on there. And make sure to check out Art of London as well. Um, I'll leave the info down below. But yeah, that's the vibe for today. And then afterwards, gonna head to a cafe, do some work there, and then come home and shoot for part of a campaign for Coca-Cola. Very, very excited about this. I can't believe it. It's like one of my dream collaborations. So head over to my TikTok. But yeah, that's basically the plan for today. This is like the first day of my week. So I will be working through the weekend because obviously I miss Monday and Tuesday from being in Poland. Check out the vlog if you haven't already. But yeah, so I'm looking forward to a productive week ahead. I believe this is the only day I need to go like into Central, which is great because I need to do so much work on my laptop and just at home. I'm gonna need to shoot quite a bit at home, edit quite a lot because I have some campaigns I need to submit. But um, yeah, let's do a few days in the life of a full-time content creator. I say full-time because I do other things as well. Like I would say I'm like full-time entrepreneur, you could say as a full-time, I don't know like what my title is, but like this is my content creator life. So in terms of the equipment I'm taking, I've got my phone, which by the way, new case from Case to Buy. Thank you guys so much. So yeah, my phone is an iPhone 13. Pro Max. I make sure to always shoot my video on 4K 60 but export in 4K 30. I'll talk about why later. My trusty tripod from Atom Tech. I collabed with them maybe like two years ago or a year and a half ago and I've been using this ever since. This is actually my second one. It has this detachable Bluetooth clicker thing. So this is perfect. It extends very high and the legs extend like this. That's like when I'm filming on my phone, what I shoot with. When I'm filming on my camera, this was my old camera that I don't really use anymore. I use this for the podcast when we have a multi-cam setup if we have guests. This is a Sony a6000. This was like one of my first ever cameras. I started with the Canon 700D, I believe. I did like the Canon, but I ride or die for Sony. I just like the way the colors come out personally. Hello, especially with the camera that I'm using to film this. If I shoot in S-Log3, which I'm not right now, but if I do, the color correcting that you can do is just so amazing. It's like when you take a picture in RAW, how it's like completely flat, there are no colors there, but you can really bring them out in post. It's like that, but in video. So yeah, Sony A6000. This was the kit lens, 18 to... Yeah, that's my alarm to leave. And yeah, this is an e-mount lens, but really enjoy this. The only thing I didn't love is it didn't have a complete flip out screen. So I got really used to vlogging without like being able to see myself. But I love how lightweight this is. I know people love this U7X because it has that flip out screen, but I'm not the hugest fan of it because I love a detachable lens. Just like if you're into like the videography side of things, go for something with a detachable lens. Always have an extra battery as well. That's something I need to get for this camera. And the camera that I'm using at the moment that you see me filming on is the Sony A7S Mark III, my dream camera, and I can confirm it is still that. Like I cannot fault this camera, I am obsessed. It has a flip out screen on the side and I'm using a 24 to 105 lens. So yeah, I'm gonna go, we'll talk about more of this later because I'm running late now. So yeah, let's get going. <laughs> something useful to have right now.
currently 4 p.m. It is Friday. We haven't caught up in a minute. I was out filming the day before yesterday in London. The shoot went well. Shooting is going well for Coca-Cola. It's hard recording behind the scenes at the same time as shooting, but I'm gonna try do it more moving forward now when I do these sorts of videos. I'm really trying my absolute best to be a bit more creative and actually just enjoy myself when shooting campaigns because it's easy to just fall into the routine of just doing what you know and like you're not really expressing your creativity that much. So I've really been enjoying doing that with this campaign. So my process is normally receive a brief from the client, the brand, and then based on their brief, I create a treatment. So for this, for example, I did two brief outlines, I did a mini mood board, and then I also presented a few content examples just so that they could see the style that I was going for. And then I also did example voiceovers because a lot of the campaigns I do, I normally just do voiceovers. I don't speak directly to camera, especially if it's more vlog style. I feel like that's just, oh, now the light's disappearing, that's great. If there are any notes to highlight, I'll highlight that there. Stuff like locations, music licensing, length of the video, that sort of stuff. And then I send that over to them. They either approve, ask for any changes. Then we arrange deadline for the draft, for the final version, and then a live date. So yeah, the plan for the rest of the day is to finish shooting this Coca-Cola campaign, have dinner, do some batch editing. I did ask you guys for questions on my Instagram, if you don't follow me already, make sure you do, about being a full-time content creator, but we'll do that on a different day because I need to get back to work. <laughs> Good morning, it's Saturday morning, 9 a.m. This is the vibe, this is the vibe for the day. I'm about to start editing my Poland vlog. The timeline is completely empty. So normally these will take me around two days to edit. I'm hoping for max six hours. And that doesn't include exporting, uploading, thumbnail, description. I think what I'll do is I'll record me doing it. I'll go through my workflow. But if you want like a more detailed how I actually edit and how I actually do specific things, um, let me know. So yeah. Let's get started. Okay guys, let's get editing. So before I jump into Final Cut Pro, which is what I use for editing, I like to organize my footage into different folders. So I'll have day one, day two, day three, all within each video's separate folder in my hard drive. And then within each of those days, I'll have a folder for iPhone footage and camera footage. Just because when it comes to things like color grading, I have to do these a bit differently and I'd like to know in advance. Okay, so next is putting everything into the timeline. I like to just put everything in so I can see how much footage in total I'm working with just to give me an idea of how long it'll take me to edit and then I like to divide everything up into different sections and I just put a plain screen any color in between each of those and that's where I'll add some transitions kind of like scenes if you will and then depending on the color that will mark whether it's the end of a different day or just the end of a scene so I'll do that right at the start and then it's time to move on to the speaking clips just because these normally take the longest and require the most of my attention so I like to start with that and then again, it helps me gauge how long the video is going to be because if I've spoken for like 30 minutes and then I managed to edit this down to 10 minutes, I know the video is probably going to be around 15 minutes, like with all the montages. And then I also use the same backing track for all of my speaking sections just for consistency. Sometimes I do change up if I'm feeling, you know, really creative or whatever, but most of the time I just keep it the same. And then after I finish with the speaking clips, it's time to move on to all the montage stuff, which is the part I love so much. So I add music, make sure it's copyright free I always love editing to the beat and then normally before I started doing it this way I would trim all the clips that I'd be using in a montage before I add music and then almost re-edit it again after that but what I've started doing just for the ease of it I guess is just putting everything in and trimming the clips to the audio straight off the bat instead of trying to find good sections in each clip before adding the music and yeah on the note of everything being copyright free this is probably the hardest part for me luckily I found really good places to get copyright free music like epidemic sound thematic but you know me i love my music and i would love to be able to edit to the music on my spotify but it's just impossible if you want to avoid copyright strikes but it's okay as i said i've managed to find good music i love my lo-fi beats so it's all right next i'll go through all of these different sections once i've added that and add the transitions in those sections where i've marked for a transition to be if that makes sense and then after i've done that i'll add an intro and an outro screen and i usually keep the the same across each video until I get bored and want to switch it up. At the moment I'm really enjoying my intro and outro. After this I'll add all the final elements. So when it comes to color grading I like to use an adjustment layer which is basically a filter that goes across the whole project. I use two different adjustment layers, one for camera footage, one for iPhone footage.
vintage just because the colors come out a bit differently and then on this you can add your color wheels and all of that stuff i think that's something i need to go into detail on another time because you can make a whole video just about color grading the same way you can make a whole video just about sound but um yeah so that's what i do and then i'll add any text especially when i've got long montage sections where i haven't spoken i think it's good to just have an explanation of what i'm doing over there i'll add any voiceovers which i enjoy doing sometimes i don't like to overdo it with the voiceovers because i like to have sections with just music um i'll add location tags so especially on a travel vlog this is really important so that people can know where i am and where to go where to save i'll add any social media tags so if i'm with other fellow content creators i'll put their at on the screen i'll put my at on the screen and then also that really annoying fun button that reminds you guys to subscribe i'll put that in as well after this it's time to export i'll watch through the video just to make sure i'm happy with everything skim through to check out any color grading mistakes because sometimes some clips are very overexposed very underexposed you can just never really know it is good to go through not frame by frame but at least like clip by clip just to make sure you're happy or when you're filming just try keep the light consistent which is why you saw me get annoyed earlier when the light was changing because i just knew that would give me extra work when editing but um yeah after i export i make a thumbnail i make a title which i usually have an idea about when i'm editing depending on the video i might even have the title before i start filming and then i'll make a description and i'll try keep the same format across each of my videos just for a consistent tone of voice and then it's time to upload it to youtube for you guys to enjoy so that's basically my whole process when it comes to editing a video if you found this interesting and want me to go more in depth make sure you sign up to my newsletter which will be linked in the description because in there i will definitely be posting weekly bi-weekly tips and tricks and maybe even a full editing course at some point so yeah sign up there but let's continue with the video it's a tuesday afternoon you have caught us in the middle of a very busy but also very stagnant day yes we yeah. have also productive <laughs> yeah also productive yes. we've booked flights we've gone to um, <laughs> for literally two unplanned weeks time or something trip. like that very unplanned. unplanned we're gonna go to italy right now we're on our way to a workshop at pinterest and we've hopped around like a bunch of different watch houses because obviously we we keep that chain going let us know they've seen we support no literally yeah that's basically what we've been up to today just doing a bit of work for our new york trip doing some itinerary stuff as we should we've got a meeting in two days time so we just went over some stuff for that we spend a lot of the time a lot of our time at the pinterest offices that's one because we both create on pinterest and have managers at pinterest and they're just they just re, they're just they're just really invested in their creators they yeah take care of their creators they're so good and they want their creators to do well because it reflects good on them and the company generally exactly exactly so, yeah. so that's why we're always there so now they've started this thing where they do monthly socials so today we're decorating candles and doing tablescapes i believe for spring for spring and i think that's in partnership with john lewis which is really exciting so. Okay guys, it is currently like 7, just after 7 p.m. We've just finished up Pinterest. We're on our way Such to- a huge, <laughs> wholesome event. Oh it was my so adorable. We're on our way to the next event. It's at the Royal Academy of Arts. I'll tell you a bit more about it later. Actually, will I? I'll tell you about it now. It's basically a new collection called Souls Grown Deep. It's like black artists from Southern America showcasing some of their work. So really excited about that. But the, the workshop at Pinterest was so adorable. So, so, so cute. We did some tablescaping with John Everyone's Lewis. so friendly. I know, the Pinterest community oh, is just the best, absolutely. So friendly. <laughs> 
did some tablescaping, we did some candle painting, some menu decorating, illustrating, and then we got to take away some John Lewis stuff, which is really kind of them. So thank you, Pinterest, and thank you, John Lewis. Thank you. So where's your stuff? It's in my Pinterest bag. Yes, there we go. Yeah, no biggie. Our bus is here. We're going to get this one. So we'll, let's go to the next event. Let's. <laughs> Okay guys, I've realized I've lived all of these days without actually answering your questions. So I asked you guys to ask me questions on Instagram about being a full-time content creator. And I'm gonna answer some of those now because I feel like whilst you can watch me live my life, obviously it doesn't encapsulate everything and you might have some other questions. So um, how do you spread out your content in a way that keeps the audience engaged? On the weekends, because people aren't working most of the time, that's when I'll post maybe three times a day if I'm feeling crazy. But on a normal day, it'll be once or twice, so I'll do morning and evening. Also just interact on stories every day if it's Instagram. Would you recommend posting videos on both TikTok and Instagram? Yeah, 100%, repurpose. But I would say definitely don't use the same text from TikTok on Instagram or use the app's native text, if that makes sense. So when you type things on Instagram, I know it's so long, but you have to go and retype that title on TikTok and just use the in-app text tools because that works for search engine optimization, especially on a platform like TikTok where it's becoming more like a search engine. Instagram, honestly, I just don't understand what they're doing. You can't search anything on Instagram. It's the worst place for finding things and searching things, in my opinion. But um, yeah, TikTok is great. So anything text-wise you put in your video, if you put like, hey, I'm spending the day in London today, come with me to my favorite cafe, and that's as text in your video, if someone searches cafes to visit in London, your video will come up because of all those keywords ingrained in your text. Worst part of being a content creator, it's not really a job you can complain about when there's people literally saving lives, but I would say the worst part is probably the inconsistency, um, which is why I wouldn't describe myself as a full-time content creator because I do other things, have multiple streams of income. You could say it's important to build skills in other areas, even if it's still within the content space, you know, have other skills outside of just posting that content. You know, do you know how to edit? Do you know how to film? Do you know how to consult in all of these different areas? But um, yeah, the worst part is probably the consistency or lack of consistency. And maybe just like brands not taking you seriously. I think there's a lot of taking advantage in the industry, especially with black female creators, with brands just clearly disrespecting rates in comparison to their white female counterparts. I did a whole dissertation on this for my master's degree and I plan to make a full on video essay exploring that more. Apart from that, I really can't complain. I think it would be incredibly dumb to sit here and pick apart the negatives of being a content creator because I love, I love doing it, I really do. When I was at uni, what was my schedule to juggle work and content? Education came first. The only reason I think I managed to pass my degrees and still be consistent with content is because I was filming lifestyle content most of the time. I started with fashion content, but I've realized this is actually taking quite a bit of time out of my day to day. So let me just film what I'm doing day to day. And that really helped because I didn't have to set aside a bunch of time to film. But yeah, always prioritize the education. Obviously you're paying thousands and thousands for it. And it's really valuable information that you're gaining. But if you want to be balancing loads of different lives or even just two different lives you have to be organized with how you go about doing that so i'd highly recommend just time blocking your day and giving the most time to the most important thing at that given point and that will change as you go through life how the hell did you get started doing this full time i was just doing it as a hobby for years not really thinking anything of it not improving at all just doing it and then i went part-time doing it i'd say when i was in my last year of my undergrad and doing my master's degree where I was like, okay, let me actually dedicate time to trying to improve in each piece of content that I make more or less. And then once I graduated from my master's, I guess now is when I'm doing it full time. I would say I'm a creative entrepreneur. I've come to that title throughout the course of these few days when I've been filming. Guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. As I mentioned when I was editing, I am starting a newsletter, so sign up down below. So that is where I'll be sharing all my content creator tips about equipment, editing, all of that stuff who knows maybe even a full editing course but you'll have to sign up there to be the first to know so link will be in the description thank you so much for watching this video hope you enjoyed it 
If you did, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, turn notifications on so you don't miss any videos. It's been a minute since we've done a full outro like this. Um, but yeah, thank you so much again for sticking around and for watching. Sending you so much love. Hope everyone has a great week ahead. I'm gonna go now, but I'll see you next time. So bye. <laughs>